Hi, I'm Casey. Welcome to the iHeart Latin channel. Lesson number two, where we will be talking about the second declension, the dative case, use of prepositions, predicate nouns, the verb sum, and the use of the word quo. So let's just jump right in. Remember in the last lesson, we talked about this idea that nouns belong to different families called declensions. So in the last lesson, we talked exclusively about first declension nouns. This lesson, we are going to introduce second declension nouns. So these are groups of nouns that belong to the family of the second declension. And I have a couple of, of examples up here on the board. So you can see I've got the word filius, filii, and that means son. Amicus, amici, and that means friend. Kibus, kibi, food. Bellum, belli, war. We'll talk about these other words in a minute. So nouns of the second declension are, remember there's three things you have to think about when we think about Latin nouns, and that is GNC, gender, number, case. So nouns in the second declension are either masculine or neuter. In Latin, I think I said this in the last lesson, but we'll just go over it again. Um, this idea of nouns being gendered is not something that we have in English. Uh, like I said, you know, we have a couple, Mother Earth, Father Time, you know, things where we kind of assign gender to different nouns. Um, but generally, we, we, we don't do that. They do in Latin. So a noun is always either feminine, masculine, or neuter. So all the nouns in the first declension are feminine, unless it's a boy job. Remember that, like the word sailor. That's traditionally something a man would do. So that is masculine, even though it's in the first declension, which is feminine. Um, in the second declension, the nouns are either masculine or neuter. Most of the time they're masculine, but there are um, a handful of nouns in the second declension that are neuter. So if you pull out your handy dandy little declension cheat sheet here, and if you don't have this, I'll put a link in the description. You can print it out. It's a nice thing to keep handy while we're talking about nouns. Um, we are going to be looking at these two boxes today um, for the second declension. So this box here would be the potential endings for the second declension if they were masculine. And these right here will be the potential endings for a noun if it's in the second declension and it's neuter. So if you look at the example of the words I have on the board here, um, remember that when we're talking about nouns and we're going to translate it, uh, first thing we have to do is find the stem. So remember in the last lesson, we talked about finding the stem in the first declension. You drop the genitive singular, the AE, remember that? It's the same pattern in the second declension. So when you see Latin nouns listed, you're going to get two different versions. Remember, you're gonna get the nominative singular and the genitive singular. And that refers to case. If you don't know what that means, you can go back and watch lesson number one where I explain that. Any noun whose genitive singular ends in a long I belongs to the second declension. Um, but the way we find the stem in the second declension, same idea, we're gonna drop the long I in the genitive singular. So the stem for the word son would be, so I'm gonna drop this I right here, would be F, and there's a long I, and then a short I, so Philly, and then I would put my, my, um, my endings on the end of this stem. So if I wanted to find the stem for the word amicus amici, which means friend, I would drop this long I and my stem becomes M A M I C amic, and then I would put whatever appropriate ending on the end of that stem there. Same thing with kibus kibi, I would drop the I and I would get C I B. So I'm dropping this I right here. And then bellum belli, which means war, I would drop the I and my stem would be B-E-L-L -L, and the ending would go on there. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but if you look at the nominative singulars right here, so these are my four nouns of the second declension, you can see the first three end in U-S and the fourth one ends in U-M. So that's how you can determine if a noun in the second declension is masculine or neuter. If it's masculine, it will end in U-S, and if it's neuter, it will end in U-M. So that's why we need both of these 
two versions of this word because they each tell us something different about the word itself. So the nominative singular tells us if it's masculine or neuter. The genitive singular gives us a way to find the stem. So if you look at your cheat sheet here, you can see for the masculine endings for nouns of the second declension, us, e, o, um, o in the singular, e, orum, is, os, is in the plural. And if you look over here, so I kind of have a dark blue for the masculine and a little bit of a lighter blue for the neuter. Um, they're very similar. You'll see if you look, there's only a couple of differences um, between the masculine and the neuter. So if you look at the singular column here, um, e, o, um, o. So that's exactly the same with the exception of the nominative singular. And then for the plural, it's a, orum, is, a, is. So that differs from the masculine um, in the nominative plural and the accusative plural. So you can kind of study this chart and you can see the similarities, you can see the differences. And if I didn't say this already <laughs> in the first lesson, um, you'll do yourself a huge favor if you memorize all these declension endings. Uh, it'll save you from having to look at the chart. You'll just know them off the top of your head. When you see a word, you'll know what role it's playing in the sentence. Even though it's a lot of work, it's worth doing. Okay, so let's talk about um, how to decline words in the second declension. So here we have a sentence, the son gave the friend food after the war. So let's just worry about the first part of this sentence right now. The son gave the friend food. If you don't know how to determine case, I have a little question ID cheat sheet. I will put the link in the description for this as well. This will help you determine what case or what role these nouns are playing in the sentence. So if we look at our question ID cheat sheet and we look at this sentence here, the first question to find the subject is we'll ask who or what is this sentence about? So who or what is this sentence about? The son gave the friend food after the war. It's about the son, right? He's the one doing the giving. So son is the subject. And in Latin, we call that case. You look over here, the subject is the nominative case. So this would be nominative. Uh, is this singular or plural? Just only one son, so that's singular. And is the word son masculine, feminine, or neuter? Well, obviously it's masculine, right? We're talking about a boy. And so those are the three things I need to worry about when I'm, when I'm thinking about nouns, gender, number, case. So I have my gender, which is masculine, my number, singular, there's only one son, and my case, which is nominative. Now, the next thing I need to do is find the verb. So I look at my next question, what is the subject doing or being? So what is the son doing? He's giving, right? So here's my verb. All right, now let's see if I have a direct object. So the next question I ask is, you just plug the, the words in here, subject, verb, who, or what. So the son gave who or what. This can be a little bit tricky. Um, is he giving the friend or is he giving food? Well, he's actually giving food, right? He's not giving his friend like a present. Um, he's giving food. So this would be my direct object. And in Latin, we call that case the accusative case. So this is my accusative. Is food singular or plural? Well, it's kind of a funny word, right? Um, food could refer to more than one thing, but it is, we're using it singularly in this case. Um, and is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? Well, let me look at my list here. The nominative singular ends in a U-S, so that means it's masculine. <laughs> masculine. Um, all right, let's see if I have an indirect object. The dative case is my indirect object case. So if we think about this um, in terms of English, a direct object is um, a noun, or a word acting like a noun, that is receiving the action of the verb. So I'm asking myself, what's being given? It's the food. So here's my direct object. That's the thing that's actually being given. Um, to find an indirect object, we ask this question right here, this fourth question, subject, verb, direct object, to or for, who or what? 
So what that looks like is, I'll just plug these words in. The son gave the food to or for who or what. So in this case, the son gave the food to who or to whom? Um, we gave it to the friend. So this word right here is an indirect object. And I look over here, the indirect object is the dative case. So that would be the dative case. Is friend singular or plural? It's singular. Is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? Well, let me look at my list over here. It ends in a US. It's a noun of the second declension ending in a US, so that means it's masculine. So I will plug those three things in right there. So if I want to plug the correct word into the sentence, the correct Latin word, um, let's figure that out. So the first word is sun. We've determined that it's nominative singular. We know it's masculine because it's in the second declension and the nominative singular ends in a US. We figured out how to find the stem. We dropped the I in the genitive singular. Um, so here's my stem. It's F, a long I, L-I, so fili. And then if I look at what a nominative singular ending would be, I'll come back to my cheat sheet here. So here are my masculine options for nouns of the second declension. So the nominative singular ending would be US. So in this case, the word I would plug in here would be filius. That is the nominative singular ending for filius fili. Okay, my next word, friend, if I wanted to plug the correct Latin word in here, I've determined that it's dative singular. So if I look at the cheat sheet, and I come down here, so the dative column, that's the middle one, the dative singular in the second declension masculine is a long O. So I've already figured out how to find my stem. So my stem is A-M-I-C. And then the correct ending for the dative singular would be O, a long O. And then the last word I, I have that we're dealing with right now uh, is the word food. And I've determined that this is accusative singular. I've determined that here, this CIB, here's my stem for the word food. So if I look at my chart and I come down to accusative singular, my ending would be UM. Um. So that's what the correct Latin words would look like plugged into this sentence. The filius gave the amico kibum after the war. Okay, let's talk for a minute about prepositions. If you don't know how to identify a preposition, my suggestion is find a list on the internet somewhere and print it out. That's probably the easiest thing to do. You can keep it handy. You can consult that list if you run into a word and you're not sure if it's a preposition or not. The official definition is on my little cheat sheet, my eight parts of speech cheat sheet. I'll put the link in the description. The official definition is um, a word that shows a relationship between a noun or pronoun and other words in a sentence. It's a little bit abstract, maybe tough for younger kids to wrap their head around, um, but basically it's relating one word to another. The same, the same goes for Latin. So we're relating one word to another, we're showing a relationship. So over the fence or under the bridge. Over would be the preposition, fence would be the object of the preposition, the noun that is um, in the objective case there. Same with under the bridge. Under is the preposition showing a relationship to the bridge. Uh, the bridge is the object that is completing that idea, that relationship. And so the case for the object of the preposition in Latin is called the ablative case. Um, most prepositions in Latin take the ablative case. However, there are a few that take the accusative. And when you see vocabulary listed in whatever curriculum you're using, they should tell you whether it's accusative or ablative. Uh, so I have two prepositions here. Post means after, cum means with. Post is a preposition that takes the accusative. So normally we would put objects of the preposition in the ablative case. However, with post, you're gonna put it in the accusative. And you just have to memorize that. There's unfortunately no shortcut or rule of thumb. You just have to commit it to memory. Cum, however, follows the rule and does take the ablative case. So if we look at our practice sentence here, um, we've, already we we've already determined what Latin words go in these places here. 
But now let's look at this prepositional phrase after the war. So the nice thing about prepositions in Latin is they don't get declined or conjugated. They, their spelling stays the same. So hallelujah for that. We don't have to think about one more thing that we have to change the endings to. So if I was going to put in the proper Latin word for the word after, just look on my vocab list here and it's post. And that is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then the word war. So let's think about the word war. Let me look at my vocab list here. Um, I see that the nominative singular is um, ends in um, so that means it's neuter. The gender is neuter. And um, we've already determined how to find the stem. So the stem is B-E-L-L. -L. So now I look and I see that the word post takes the accusative. So instead of putting this object of the preposition in the ablative case, which is the case that would normally go into, I'm going to use the accusative case instead. So if you look at your handy dandy chart, and we know that bellum, belly, is neuter, so I'm gonna look at this square instead, and I'm gonna find the accusative singular, and the ending is um. So it would be bellum, because this, this word is going to have to be in the accusative, even though technically it's an object of the preposition, um, because this particular preposition takes the accusative. Um, now, if I wanted to say with the war, cum, well, they don't use the word the, but I'll stick it in there. If I wanted to say with the war, then I would, because cum takes the ablative, I would say cum, and I'm looking at here, my neuter endings here, ablative singular, it would be cum bello, because cum takes the ablative. Hope, hoping that's making sense to everybody. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about uh, something called a predicate nominative. Now, not every verb is what we call a transitive verb, meaning not every verb expresses action that could be transferred to a direct object. So for instance, if I say, um, Jane smelled the rose. In that sentence, Jane's doing something to the rose. She's smelling the rose. There's an action that's being transferred from the subject to the direct object. But if I said the rose smells sweet, the rose isn't actually doing anything. It's just being something. So in that case, that verb is not an action verb, and we would call that um, a state of being verb or a linking verb. In English, there are four different types of verbs. We won't get into all four of them right now. Um, but I wanted to introduce this idea of something called a predicate nominative. So if you have that cheat sheet about the nine different roles a noun can play in a sentence, again, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, one of the roles that a noun can play is a role called the predicate nominative. So if I say my son is my friend, in this sentence, is my son actually doing anything? No, he's just being something, right? He's being my friend. So this verb is not an action verb. There's no action being transferred from my son to friend. Um, if I said, um, my son loves his friend, that's an action verb because my son's doing something, he's loving. Uh, but here, in this case, my son isn't doing anything. He's just being something. So if we were going to determine what ha the correct Latin forms to plug into this sentence, we would start out by looking at our, um, at our question ID cheat sheet, this back to this, and we would ask ourselves the first question to find the subject, which is who or what is this sentence about? It's about my son, right? So this is my subject and that is the nominative case. Is son singular or plural? It's singular, is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? It is masculine. So those are the three things I need to think about, right? Gender, number, and case. Okay, um, what is my son doing or being? There's my verb, right? He is, he's being something. And then you can see that um, this, this third question here, um, which normally helps us determine a direct object, so my son is who or what, my son is my friend, 
Um, I might be tempted to think this is a direct object, but it's not receiving any action. So, hmm, now I'm sort of stumped, right? So that's why you see there's a split here. Um, is the verb an action verb? No, it's not an action verb. There's no action happening. Um, is it a linking verb? Am I kind of linking two ideas together? Could I say my son equals my friend? Or could I swap these around and say my friend is my son? If I can answer yes to that question, if I'm making sort of an equivalent statement, I'm saying one thing equals the other, then what I have here is not a direct object because it's not receiving any action. What I have here is something called a predicate nominative. So um, I'm gonna label that PN. So, so if the answer is, this is a linking verb, my son is just being something, um, I've got a predicate noun or a predicate nominative. And what case might that be? If I look at my five Latin cases here, well, there's a hint in the name, predicate nominative. So yes, that would be in the nominative case as well. So I've got nominative here, and I've also got nominative here. So is friend singular or plural? It's singular. Is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? Well, let me look at my vocab list. I know that my nouns in the second declension that end in US are masculine. So I've got a masculine uh, noun here as well. So if I wanted to plug in the correct words for son and friend, my nominative singular masculine ending in the second declension, so back to my chart here, would be nominative singular would be us. So filius. And then same thing here, nominative singular masculine, again, us, amicus. So that's the correct Latin form that we would plug into this sentence right here. Let's talk briefly about the special verb sum. This is just one of those things that you're gonna have to memorize. Uh, the verb sum, which is a state of being verb, it means, it's, it's the verb to be. So I am, he, she, it is, you are. Um, here are the forms of the verb sum. So first person singular, I am, sum. Second person singular, you are, s. Third person singular, he, she, it, is, est. We are, sumus, you all, plural, are, estus. And they are, sunt. So this is a really important verb to know. You'll see it all the time. Generally, Latin verbs come last in a sentence. However, uh, sum, uh, tends to come wherever. <laughs> uh, remember that I said or the order of the words in Latin is not as important as it is in English, not nearly as important. So um, generally, like I said, verbs come last. However, this one can come anywhere. So you'll see in the last lesson I talked about the personal signs, the personal endings, OST, mustis, unt. So you can see the pattern continues generally here. Um, in the first person singular, it ends in an M, not an O but everything else kind of stays the same. So normally it's an O, but this time it's an M, S, T, must, tis, N. So that makes it a little bit easier, but there isn't a common stem. So remember last in the last lesson, we talked about how to find the stem of a verb. So you find the stem, you put the right ending on, that's how you conjugate it. However, this is an irregular verb, so the stem is not regular. So like I said, just memorize that. You'll see it all the time. It's a really, really handy verb to know. Last thing in lesson two, I know this one was pretty dense, a lot of material here, so we've got one more thing to cover and then we'll wrap it up, and that is the use of the word quode. Quode is a subordinating conjunction and it doesn't change its spelling either, which is really good news. Just like the prepositions, we don't have to worry about something else that we have to decline or conjugate. All right, so if we look at this sentence right here, the sailor praises the war because the war gave the, solar, the sailor victory. Uh, there's kind of two things happening in this sentence, right? The sailor is praising the war and the war is giving the sailor victory. Um, so if we look at this sentence and we are trying to think about how we're gonna plug in the correct Latin words, the first thing we have to do is um, ask ourselves, well, what role are these words playing? So we're always gonna come back to our little cheat sheet here with the question IDs. 
And we're going to start at the top and say the sailor praises the war. So who or what is this sentence about? It's about the sailor. He's praising the war, right? Um, so here is my subject. That's in the nominative case. Is it singular or plural? There's only one sailor, so it's singular. Is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? Well, remember that this is a word in the first declension. However, so normally it would be feminine. However, it's a traditionally masculine job, so it is indeed masculine. Um, and what's the sailor doing or being? Well, he's praising. There's my verb. And can I answer this question? The sailor praises who or what? Yes, he's praising the war. So this is my direct object. It's my accusative case. It is singular and it is neuter. Right? I look over here and I can tell that, the, that this is a neuter second declension word because it ends in U-M. Um, okay, could that be a sentence all by itself? The sailor praises the war? It could. So this is what we would call in English an independent clause. This can be a sentence all by itself. And it's the same in Latin. This, this is an independent clause here. However, I have this other group of words that's following because the war gave the sailor victory. Um, so there's kind of two, two separate ideas, right? The sailor praising the war is one. The war giving the sailor victory is the other. So let's see if I have another subject and another verb. If I look at the second part of the sentence here, the war gave the sailor victory, uh, who or what is this particular, these, this group of words, right? Who or what is this about? It's about the war. The war is the one doing the giving. So I have another nominative. Is this singular or plural? It's singular, and we determine that that is neuter. What's being said about the war, or sorry, what is um, the war doing or being? The war is giving, so there's my verb. And... The war is giving who or what? The war is giving victory. So here is my accusative. It's singular and the word for victory is in the first declension. So this is feminine. And then let's see, what about the word sailor? Let's keep going. Um, let's see if I have an indirect object, the dative case. Can I say the war gave victory to who? Indeed I can, so I have an indirect object there. That's the dative case. It's singular and it's masculine. Okay, so I have kind of two separate ideas happening here and they're being joined together by this word because this word we would call in English uh, a subordinating conjunction. It's a conjunction. It's being used in this case to join a subordinate clause to an independent clause. What do I mean by that? Um, well, a clause is just a group of words that have a subject and a verb. They can be independent, in other words, it can be a sentence all by itself, or it can be dependent, meaning it, it really can't be a sentence all by itself, doesn't make total sense by itself. So if I look at this sentence, the sailor praises the war, that can be a sentence all by itself. However, this one, because the war gave the sailor victory, can't be a sentence all by itself. It doesn't make total sense if it stands alone. So we need this word because to join these two ideas together. That's really the idea behind a conjunction. And like I said, the nice thing about conjunctions in Latin is you don't have to decline them. You don't have to conjugate them. Their, their spelling doesn't change. Uh, and so um, we can just plug the word quod right in here. If I, wanted to, um, if I wanted to translate that word because in Latin, I would just stick quod right in there. I know that was a lot of material. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, also hit the bell so you know when new episodes are out. If you have questions, leave them in the uh, comments section below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching iHeart Latin. I will see you in lesson number three.